This is Twit. Yeah, so at the same time as the Microsoft announced these new features coming to Windows, Microsoft announced two, I'm going to call them additive uh, Surface devices, Surface PCs. So new Surface Pro and Surface Laptop models that are different from the existing versions, but also not replacing them, right? So they're both smaller. They're both less expensive. They both have um, lower end Snapdragon, you know, plus chips or whatever. Right. Um, I this, honestly, this, this, this could be about your car. <laughs> Can we talk about your laptop? <laughs> What's going on? It's got an orange screen in it. <laughs> so this is this this is their it, they're trying to push it as an upgrade. Well, these are they don't say it this way. It's sort of like when Apple introduced the um, 16e and they didn't say, well, this is going to replace the SE. Uh, yeah, these replace like the Go products they used to have so there was a surface go which is a little laptop a little tablet and then a surface laptop go which is a little laptop so these are more they're full size but smaller right so 13 inch on the laptop as opposed to 13.8 and 15 uh on the existing versions and then 12 inches on the pro and fanless by the way which is nice um and the first first snapdragon um as opposed to 13 inches so they kind of have this, um, you know, broader family of both these products. And actually, if you look at the consumer lineups now, this is it. They have Surface Laptop. They have Surface Pro. Oh, that's interesting. All right. Yeah. And the, this, these the are post- Copilot. These are ARM-based Copilot are PCs. Mm-hmm. Copilot plus PCs. Yeah. Yeah. But this is the yep. post-Panos hardware now. Yeah, this is, um, you know, Mike, uh, look, I, I'm sure Satch Nadell, whomever, someone, Amy Hood, whatever it was, uh, came to them and like they went to a lot of Microsoft and said, you're going to have to cut back. You know, we're doing this other thing now. It's a little bigger. Uh, and Windows and um, Surface, you know, both, especially Surface, because Surface is just, you know, not a profit center, right? Um, I'm sure there, you know, there were a lot of aspirations, but, um you know, it's not making any money. So I think these make sense, honestly. I think these mm-hmm. are cool computers. I think these will be really nice for students, obviously, but also for people who travel a lot and need the battery life above all else. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the performance is like on a... I've never used a, one of the Plus uh, chips. I, I but, was also thinking this is the last hurrah of the first generation Snapdragon Ultras. Yeah, yeah. So I just met with Qualcomm, uh, interestingly, and they were kind of talking about... They're on a, their schedule is basically September. They didn't say this outright, but they're, they're having an event in September. So That'll obviously, September, and, and this c- confirms, you know, rumors we've heard. So let's say mm-hmm. September for V2, uh, focus on the GPU. The focus on the first version was performance, uh, performance per watt, efficiency, and then with Microsoft and the Prism emulator, um, compatibility, right? Um, even with those apps that are not native, although that, that situation has improved dramatically. So, you know, they started out with the kind of the, the, the core part of the market, which is that kind of premium laptop uh, went down market to less expensive computers. So 600 and under now. And uh, the next phase that, that is rolling out right as we speak is uh, targeting the enterprise, right? They're going mm-hmm. after business customers as well. Uh, so these, we'll say, I mean, these are definitely, if I look at the ad aimed at the consumer market, the young consumer market. Yeah, right? but these same products are going into the business line as well. So starting in, I think that happens June or July, but yeah, today they're launching for consumers, but these exact products are going to launch for business as well. Eh, interesting. Yeah. Got rid of that fancy charging doohickey and it's just a USB port. Now. Yeah. And actually on the surface pro they got rid of the brick entirely like you're on really? your own you know yeah, yeah. the expert yeah because the, the go products had shipped with a 45 watt um a little I think, d- I little think it was usb thing. i don't remember if it was usb or surface connect but um a power adapter you can, you can use either obviously with whatever wire but um it's these surface, don't even have the surface connect yeah it's dead then well it's hard to say so they might still offer it it's one of those things because this business makes that a little tricky um so we'll see what they do next i mean the the previous surfaces they've announced for business and the ones they did last year for Copilot Plus PC were all Surface Connect. So it's they didn't say that. Um, you know, we'll see what the next gen looks like. But I don't know that this is unique. Like, I'm not 100% sure that some of the Go products didn't ship without Surface Connect at one point or another as well. But obviously most, if not all, Surface products have had Surface Connect. But... Anyway, USB-C is the right way to go. This is one of those areas where 
to to make this thing hit a certain price point. And these are pretty cheap too, like $7.99, $8.99. Um, you know, they had a you have to make compromises, right? So the screens are slightly lower res, obviously. The there's no surface connect. The USB is not Thunderbolt 4, it's USB three point something. I don't know. It's pro I don't know this for a fact, but I bet it's ten gigabits per second, not twenty or it's certainly not forty. Um it's UH, uh, UFS storage um, instead of SSD, but that's good, right? Or no? I, no, I think it's good. it's good for efficiency. It's good for battery life. Like it's yeah. it's probably fine. Like it's not going to yeah. be the highest performance thing. Yeah, um, it's a, but it's another good cost cutting measure. It's how you keep the thing under a grand. Yeah, uh, Richard, I will say because uh, I know you've been concerned about this. I asked about your desktop computer, build it yourself kind of thing, yeah. and they don't see going into this market. Huh? Yeah. I don't think there's going to be uh, a Snapdragon uh, ATX board. Like you should not. Yeah, there are going to be desktops. Um, right now, the, all we have is that little mini, mini thing. Yeah. But yeah, they're like, it, they, the, it wasn't. I mean, these aren't the decision makers I talked to, but the 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 feeling was like, look, we're go, we're going after the volume part of the market. We, you know, we you have to start where most of the people are. Um, I know, you know, they. I've certainly heard this call, but um, it's always from people like us, like technical people who kind of want to do our own thing and whatever. And they're like, yeah. It's and just, I, the, the testing cost is not small. Like, this is not a little thing to get into. Yeah. And, and this isn't so much Qualcomm, but from Microsoft's perspective, you know, these things are secure core PCs. They have Pluton processors. They are Windows mm -hmm. Hello ESS. You can't really do that in a build you can't literally do that in a build your own system you, there's no way to certify that right so no, you have to you have to have a bunch of hardware requirements that the typical hand builder is not going to follow anyway yep so i i maybe that should have been the clue that this probably wasn't going to happen but it's probably not going to happen i think yeah it's, yeah well well geez how important is this business to microsoft i think this is the future of windows i i I think it. I, I think Microsoft is sending a message here in some yeah. ways. I mean, obviously, there will still be these Intel AMD Surface devices occasionally, like we saw that with the business line where they did they did that rev last year, but or was it earlier this year, whatever it was. But a lot of that I feel like is partner service. I mean, um, one of the things they were kind of hammering about these devices was like th this notion. That they would say they they always say things like in the past. <laughs> we used to put these AI workloads on GPUs, but it's actually way more efficient to do that on an MPU. And it's like, okay, but that passed was like 10 seconds ago. <laughs> Welcome I, to the I future. Don't, yeah, so, I, I, you know, Surface has always had this kind of weird stigma. They, they, they want to be leaders. They want to be perceived as leaders. They want to innovate on form factor. Yeah, I always thought they were reference machines, you know. That's yep. what I always thought, but it's... It, well, that's actually been part of it, right? They want to inspire PC makers to adopt these designs, you know, and they've only really been successful with that one uh, pro tablet design, right? That's the one a lot of PC makers did, at, at least at one point, make versions of. The convertible. The, yeah, but yeah. I, I I think I mean, now they have that, and now they have a laptop. you got to have a laptop, so that makes sense. But I think, like, the the way they can kind of show leadership, so to speak, because they're never going to, like, win the market. They're not, you know, which might be best for their relationships with these other yeah, companies. OEMs are really important to their business. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and um, I, just, you know, in the past, Microsoft would say, hey, we would like you to make a computer like this. And they were like, oh, that's really fun. And then they would make their standard laptops and stuff. Yeah. And you know this is some, this goes back thirty years. You I mean, go ahead, well, twenty Microsoft. years. Soft. You go make yeah, those. Yeah. Well, even even when PC makers were on board, like HP was the first company, and HP was often the first company to adopt anything, right? So they would come up with the first media center PC, and you go to launch on the first day, and it's like this tower. And they were like, "Yeah, we were sort of thinking about something that looked like a stereo." <laughs> and they were like, "Yeah, we were thinking about a tower." And you know, like they just so I I feel like Surface gives Microsoft a a way to be like, look, this is what it could be like, you know, and um, you know, the, la I, look, the laptop's the best seller, yes, by far. Uh, actually, I think the Pro is the best seller. Really? Oh, yeah. interesting. They haven't really talked. People about that want a while, that convertible. Yeah, the laptop's never done great per se uh, that I know about anyway. But I, but they have, huh. like I said, you have to have a laptop. You have to have that traditional form factor. Yeah, you know, but people like the detachable keyboard. 
Well, yeah, and then they complain that they don't get one with the computer. And it's like, dude, the point of it is you can choose the one you want. And it's like, right. yeah, but it doesn't come with one. And you're like, okay, listen, <laughs> this would raise the price of this thing. You know, you could you could pick the one because you know, it's right. different versions, right? Um, and the, and unfortunately, this one, uh, the, one of the other differences with this one is that keyboard is not compatible with the other keyboards, right? So oh. it's a smaller size. It doesn't have the magnets in the machine. So it doesn't do that thing where it kind of clips up and you can have the angled typing uh, yeah. surface or whatever. Um, so it's you know smaller physically, but it also just lays flat. Which, by the way, is interesting because it sort of positions this little computer tablet thing better against an iPad with a keyboard attached to it, right. like an iPad Pro. Right. And I would say and, until and unless Apple does improve iPad OS, this is actually... I would say this is probably better for most people that want an iPad Pro type computer in the sense that it's thin like it's great battery life, but it actually runs real apps. And if you render a video and go check your email, it doesn't stop rendering the video. It's a real computer operating system. Right. So yeah. I've definitely seen in the Microsoft dev community, this is the tablet reference device is the, is the pro. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. It seems to be their one real success um, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, which is why they keep well, making it, what, what's funny versions. is like they really did build a good commercial tablet that almost nobody talks about. Yep. Yep. Yeah, because it's not thought of as a tablet. It's thought of no. as a Windows device, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. But it is a tablet. I mean, obviously. Yeah, but, you know, if you go back to the original uh, RT idea, you know, and, and by the way, the, the Surface RT was the computer. In the beginning, there, were, there weren't two. There was just going to be that one. Um, and then they ended up realizing, like, okay, we got to make a pro version. It runs real Windows 8, whatever. It runs all, the, you know, because the RT just wasn't there yet. And, and ultimately, of course, was never there. But um, this was going to be that, you know, mobile, it, it can run that stuff. You can plug in a USB drive. You can attach a monitor. You can do all that stuff if you want. But uh, it, this was about the mobile app platform. And, and this thing is a device and kind of iPad compete. And, you know, flashing forward now, what is it, 13 years later, it's not so much that that's what this is, but it is it does have the platform underneath it that is more efficient, right? So it's running on Snapdragon, which is good. There's no fan. That's cool. Um, it runs all your apps. It's just about 100% on that uh, note now. it's There's not a lot missing. So this is the coming of age of, of Snapdragon, of, of all Windows on of ARM. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Mm -hmm. and, yep. Yep. So I think this is Microsoft sort of subtly saying, uh, this is what we always wanted. And the the previous little ones, they had little uh, Surface computers were all Intel based, but they were like garbage Intel. Like uh, mm. even in the scheme of Intel, they Adams were garbage. Like, yeah, like, yeah, Celeron, I think it was on the, one of them and just terrible. Yeah. Um, so. But it sounds like this fall, like if I'm coming at this from an IT perspective, this fall mm -hmm. with the new chipset is really the first time I'd seriously consider inside my organization. Yeah, yeah, that's been the big push for these guys. So like, uh, is you know, as businesses and, and meeting those compatibility issues. So like, yeah. I don't have the numbers right here in front of me, but it's they're they're super high ninety percentage and uh, native, and then le one maybe two percent that, that like don't work at all. But most mostly it's just native and then some emulated and the emulated stuff runs great and almost nothing doesn't work so yeah. it's it's there what's uh what's this uh surface connect port that they that's the thing they don't have anymore that's that blade it's their version of magsafe but right? they the, but yeah. they say it's on the 13 inch it is that's the one that already exists ah. So oh, this is, is the, the old 12. one. The yeah. new one is the 12 inch. I mean, they're still, they're not getting rid of the old one, right? The, 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 the old one, so to speak is it is a year old, but it's, right. it's, um, I know, see it's bigger. I see. Has, so, yeah, so the new thing SSD. is the 12 inch. Yes. That's right. Ah, okay. And that, that mag safe has saved my bacon this week because mm -hmm. we have little, little boys running around here yeah. and they're, they try to be careful around me, but they've tripped over that wire and it just pops oh, yeah. off very nicely. And then they hand it back to me, and I click it back in again. Like it, it does its job. Yeah, when Apple uh, introduced the MagSafe, that was a huge, right, improvement. I'm glad everybody's adopted that now. Yeah, the thing they used to have right that I to still, that. I still feel like no one has solved is the Apple for a while had those disc charges where you would coil the cable. <laughs> Remember? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Because those, it's like, what do you do with all this key? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it was always kind of a problem, but still, still is a problem. Price point is is good. Seven ninety nine puts yeah, it right square so. in the in the uh, iPad. Yep, 
Yeah, category. iPad Air, iPad, iPad Pro. Pro category. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's the size of and the price of an iPad Pro. Hey, it's me, Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Windows Weekly. If you want to see more and want to catch the whole show, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website, twit.tv slash WW. And of course, there's links right below me.